Hey everyone, welcome to the video on Solids of Revolution Part 2, looking at discs and washers. Uh, last time we went through the difference between those and uh, looked at an example using discs. This time we'll uh, look at one using washers. So uh, you should have this blue object from your uh, kit bag and uh, it does come apart so you can take uh, the top off. You can see kind of this parabola shape cross section in there and then this purple washer that uh, is kind of your sample slice right there. So um, that's what you should be taking a look at. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to sketch the situation. So we have this graph over here uh, that represents this parabola cross section. Uh, part A, we want to ask what is the axis of rotation. So uh, and then go ahead and darken that in on the graph. Uh, so if we look at uh, this guy right here, we have a, a parabola uh, that's going here, but then uh, it's not quite connected to the axis of rotation. You can see there's a hole right there in the middle. So uh, if we draw kind of an axis right through the middle of that hole, uh, that's what we're looking at. So this parabola is going to go uh, up and then uh, come back down the other side, uh, something like that. And, and you can take it apart and see it a little bit better in your hand, uh, what's going there. But uh, there is that gap. And so what it ends up being, uh, if you put it uh, to scale on, on this guy, is you're rotating around the y-axis. And in the next video, we'll um, look at what happens if I rotate around a line that's not the X or Y axis. But uh, in this case, we'll just use the Y axis. That's our line of rotation or our axis of rotation. So that's where we're going around. Uh, now, in order to use washers, you must be perpendicular uh, to the axis of rotation. So uh, either this or washers, either one. Uh, you're going to be perpendicular to that axis of rotation. So we'll go ahead and draw in our perpendicular rectangle. And you might think, well, what if I really wanted to use a vertical rectangle in this one? Well, it, you can. That's a method called shells uh, that we'll get to later, and it might actually make a little more sense to do that for this one. But um, just learning the technique, uh, we'll go ahead and, and use washers for this guy. So, uh, so here's my inside, my outside, and I'm just trying to get you know, general shape on that one. So uh, there's my washer that goes around uh, the edge right there. All right, uh, and you can make that as as nice and pretty or just as rough as, as you need to. So um, this is kind of what you're looking at is that washer. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to need, right, this big radius, how far out uh, does that go to that point right there on the edge. Uh, so that's our big R. And then how far out does this one go to this inside point it's right here uh, is that little R. And if you're moving horizontally, right, this is generally what we think of as the X direction moving along the X axis. So uh, we could call this, say, like, you know, x1, and this could be x2, or vice versa. You can call these in any order you want, but uh, if this x1 is the big R on the outside, x2 is the little r on the inside, uh, what we would need then uh, is possibly to solve for this uh, equation up here in terms of x equals rather than y equals. So uh, we'll get there in a second. Uh, so what is the axis of rotation? Well, this is going to be y-axis or the line x is 0 here in equations. Uh, sketch a sample. We already did that. And then what is the volume of that sample slice? So I'm going to put in for now this pi times big R squared, pi times little r squared, little r squared. And then times this, right, small thickness, in this case, dy. Right? So this is our small vertical thickness in this washer. Uh, so that's going to be a dy in this case, which means we need everything in terms of y. Uh, so I can maybe do this again for now. So let's say 
these are our values from before. So this was our x1 squared, 5 times x2 squared dy. And I just need to solve for what are those x's going to be. So uh, we can go ahead and do that right here. Uh, so we have this y is, let's go ahead and do that down here in quadrant 3. So we have y is negative minus 3 squared plus 4. And I want x in terms of y. Uh, so let's go ahead and move the 4 over. So we got y minus 4, negative x minus 3 squared. Uh, go ahead and divide the negative out, or just multiply both sides by negative. So we get negative y plus 4 is this x minus 3 squared. And then we can go ahead and take the root. So we got uh, square root of this. And you can leave it negative y plus 4, or I might switch it around, 4 minus y equals this, minus 3. Uh, but remember, when you take a square root, right, this is going to be uh, a positive or a negative square root. So uh, you're going to need both of those, the plus and the minus, uh, here in a minute. And then we'll go ahead and add the 3 to both sides. So we get 3 plus or minus that square root of 4 minus y. So that would be both values of this x. And if you think about how the parabola works, right, you got this 3 right down the middle, uh, and then you're adding this square root to get to the right side. Uh, so that'll be our x1. Uh, you're subtracting that root to get to the left side, so that'll be the x2. Uh, so that 3, and then either adding or subtracting to get to either of those x values that are right there. Uh, so we'll go ahead and put those in for the x's, and then we're ready to compute. So we'll say 1 is this 3 plus square root of 4 minus y. Uh, x2, very similar, uh, with the minus 3 minus that square root of 4 minus y. And then, of course, you could rewrite that whole uh, integral with the x1 and x2. When we calculate it, we'll just... Um, define those and then uh, keep the x1 x2 as as we calculate uh, we do need bounds though so let's go and take a look at the bounds so if you look at the bounds right we're using horizontal uh, rectangles and those would go all the way up and down okay so uh, horizontal all the way across every level uh, so that y is starting at zero and then ending up here at four uh, so the y's are going to run 0 to 4 on this guy. Uh, so don't use the same bounds that you do for, for x's. Remember, these are y's. Uh, if you want to put like a y equals on one of those, you can. But it's all with respect to y, that dy. Uh, so this is going to be our integral that we get right here. So uh, we're going to integrate 0 to 4. And then, uh, again, if you want to put that um, in there, you can. Uh, I'm actually going to take the pi out on this one, and then we'll say um, this is going to be uh, 1 squared minus x2 squared dy. And the x1 and x2, um, put an arrow right there. Uh, so that's it. Uh, again, you could replace those, and um, I might go ahead and just do that real quick. Uh, if you write it all out, right, there's the big, long, complicated... Um, with the 3 plus root 4 minus y, 3 minus root 4 minus y inside the squares, uh, all the way out like that. And then you can go ahead and calculate that. Again, we're not doing these by hand. Um, we're just calcula calculating those either with technology, uh, Desmos, or uh, calculators for these guys. So uh, again, I'm going to try it this way. I'm going to call x1 square root of 3 plus, we should do 3 plus, then the square root of 4 minus y. Uh, so again, that's that right half of the parabola. Uh, the x2, that's going to be 3 minus square root of 4 minus y, left half of the parabola. And then when we integrate, and if you're 4 of, and Let's go with pi outside and do x1 squared minus x2 
word y. And usually if there's any addition or subtraction, they'll want you to group those in parentheses. Uh, so we get 201.62 about, um, so however many decimals you need, go ahead and get it from that, but 201.6062, uh, let's put all right down for that guy. So 201.06. Uh, real quick, this uh, idea right here, compare the work and end results for objects one and two, what did you notice? Uh, so go ahead and think about that, I mean, write something down, uh, pause the video, and then um, come back and, and take a look at some thoughts that I have. Alright, so uh, what you can see on uh, the disks and the washers, uh, so when we did the discs in the previous video right it wasn't wasn't too bad um, we had this y value and we basically just plugged that in for r and, and calculated it out um, with desmos so uh, again you could use the calculator but it wasn't it's basically plug and chug once you find the r you just plug it in and, and calculate it. it wasn't too bad um, with the washers right there was quite a bit more work uh, solving for this x uh, to try to put it in and so you might think washers are just way harder than discs. Uh, that's not really the case. Uh, the washers in this case were tough because I had to rearrange the equation. Um, and so what we do is we try to avoid rearranging the equation if we can. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's possible to rearrange them even though it's a bit of work, but some equations just, you can't really rearrange very well. Uh, for x in terms of y or y in terms of x uh, or vice versa. So uh, if I had like y equals x sine x, I can't really rearrange that to be x equals. So it, it doesn't quite work as well. Uh, so that's why we're going to learn uh, another method called shelf. But I just wanted to point that out. Uh, it was a lot more work for washers, but not because washers are just generally harder. It's just because the equation wasn't uh, what we needed it to be. So we had to rearrange it. Uh, so go ahead and take a look at this third one. This is also going to be uh, washers. You're going to rotate around the y-axis. Uh, but you'll find this one is much easier because you have these x equals already defined. You don't have to go back and rearrange or anything like that for those guys. So go ahead and try this one on your own. Uh, I'll go ahead and give you the, the answer real quick. Uh, so this is... This is about 160.85 at the end, so uh, you kind of compare what you get on that at the end. But uh, the idea is that you're using washers, but it's not going to be quite as hard as the last one because there's no rearranging that you'll need. Uh, there's a link here. You can try to view uh, these 3D objects um, instead of just holding them in your, your hand. Um, like this one, you don't have a physical model for, so you can try to uh, view that at that link if you like to uh, using calculot 3d uh, there's another video on on how to use that so i uh, won't do that here but if you're interested uh, you can go there to try to uh, view other 3d objects at that site all right uh, there's some homework to try and also another video of when the axes are not on the x or y axis so the axis of rotation is is somewhere else all right uh, if you got any questions, make sure you post those to the forum.